Hey guys, so I can't believe that Party Fun Times is finally over. So I gathered the crew here today to officially celebrate by demolishing the Tiki Bar because we were officially done filming. I can't believe it. All right, let's do it. Are you ready for this? One second, got a call. Hey Seth, what's up? You got 30 minutes. Tell him no. Bring the tiki bar to your office, yeah. Taryn, there's no way we can do that. Yeah, we can do that. Great. Okay, um, we'll be there in 30 minutes. Can we, can we save any of those? Oh man. Oh. It's our last week on Party Fun Times and we end with a bang with Seth MacFarlane. More Seth MacFarlane and finally Seth MacFarlane. I guess I should be saving all this conversation for, I know, your, this is all for your good. program. It's fine. You what things? happened that you have so many burned things? Well, um, we thought we were done shooting this show, Seth. You thought you got canceled, yeah. but in fact you hadn't. Wait, I can identify with that. But did you destroy everything in the office? I had a little bit more foresight than you. This is one stick from the tiki bar. Yeah, why don't you save this? Save no, this we're, we're doing it. Oh, you're rolling. It. Yeah, we're rolling. Oh, you're on, oh, we're on television right now. <laughs> Internet television. So, television. This is the wood that we give all of our guests. That's what Harvey Weinstein says, by the way. <laughs> yes. This is the fabric that made up the, the talk show set. What and did then... you do to it? No, no, it's oh, no, still going. Oh, you, got, you gotta go hard, you gotta go hard. More. Well, we burned it. It's exactly what Johnny Carson used to do. Burn his Just fabric? Just take out black, gross, disgusting, <laughs> Burned I'm things. Pretty sure there's slime look on it. Like they were found in your yard. I brought you a gift. Oh, you we, did. We look bring at this. everyone a gift. You like this, right? A Jack Daniels, I Is do. This, there look we at go. that. Pop that up. I want to have a little sip. <laughs> okay, you're a professional. I would never drink on the job, but obviously you're radically different from me. They pay me to drink on this job. Mm -hmm. Who funds YouTube? This is what do I don't you, understand. Is this like, do my taxes pay for your show? That would be amazing. By the way, would you like any in your coffee, sir? Finish the coffee, and then you're and gonna then try I'll, some of the. So like do a speedball thing where I then. I wow. To, you don't. That way you don't have to mix. You can afford two cups on YouTube. <laughs> the crew was already uh, a few mimosas <laughs> in this morning. It's a lot plastic. of booze for the middle of the day. Whoa, that's a that's yeah. a healthy pour. Oh, you don't. I like watered it, it down. Not at uh, three o'clock in the afternoon. No. We have different rules here at Party Fun Times. <laughs> yeah. so, so. Alrighty. <laughs> different kind of set. It's over after here. five in Tanganyika. The, the problem is when the boss lady is an alcoholic, mm. then everybody feels it's okay to drink. Really? She drinks a lot. It's time yeah. to work, kids. So yeah. at this What's point, your format? Is this is it all this or like um, shtick and sketches? And, and then we normally just randomly cut to a segment. Everybody, welcome to Party Fun Times. We've had a really fun streak on this show. We've talked about politics, we've talked about sex, we've talked about bullying online, and this week we are covering a theme that, in my opinion, knows no bounds. Seth MacFarlane! Can I get some claps from my crew? A little late on the uptake over there, guys. Wow, you run a tight ship. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> I'm very excited to have you here because I know you've been on a lot of big talk shows. You've been on Leno and Colbert, Bill Maher, Jimmy Fallon, Seth Meyers, and now you finally have your big chance to be on Party yeah. Fun Times. It feels very strange staring at a headless flamingo that obviously you have disembodied for some bizarre reason. And the best part about this is that you can keep it as a gift. You can't Thanks. walk home with part of Leno's desk. No, you can't, but you can walk home with your discarded shit. <laughs> can I say well, shit on your show? You, you can say really? you can say you can say asshole, you can say anything. Thing. Anything on the internet, it all goes. Unbelievable. It's this makes good. up for Twitter. It does? Why? <laughs> Twitter is just a horror show. It's just, just pitchfork mobs heading to Dr. Frankenstein's castle looking to impale him. How has social media affected your creative process? Oh, so this is actually an interview. Can I okay, make it? Okay, sure. That? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk I thought we were just fing around. No, this is good. I'll oh, talk. we can, we can fuck around too. You know, I think we can look at Twitter as like, this is the thing you hear the most about as far as sh shaping opinion. Do you ever get upset or angry enough at an idiotic comment that you have to oh, respond? Everybody does. We all read our mentions and we're all like, that's some. And Ryan, it's... I did not suck your balls. Please, <laughs> please stop. Ryan, me. I didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Family Guy has fans who are conservative and fans who are liberal, and, and you also don't want to alienate your fans. So it's like you have to think in terms of the business, but at the same time you have to think in terms of 
morality and what you believe in. So it is a Goldilocks zone that you try to occupy. Goldilocks zone. It's a science term. I didn't get it. I think of you as the kind of guy that you look at challenges and you just karate kick the shit out of them. Is there anything that still maybe freaks you out or terrifies you? I like things that scare me. But at the same time, there is a balance. You know, you, you, it's good to challenge yourself. It's good to, to do things that freak you out that you could possibly fail at. But I wouldn't try to play for the NFL. I mean, I think, I think good, you should at I this point. I think it's good to know your limitations. When I was Googling you, because I, I only know you in real life, I felt like I had to do due diligence as a... As a party fun time. <laughs> as a party fun times journalist. Is they this were, journalism? Is no, this it's is? the worst form of <laughs> journalism ever. What about a Broadway show? You know, writing a Broadway show um, is not on my immediate agenda. I, doing a film musical might be a little bit closer but you know yeah i can i can see going and doing something like carousel on broadway that would be a blood because i love the music well i have a hard time yes. understanding how a guy like you who makes the content you do which i love <laughs> yeah. and i just i go to something like carousel and yeah. i fall asleep really yes oh, not see, because, I, I, no, I love the music i, I love the music show. but it just it feels like we're looking at two very different well, storytelling to me in, in each instance it's something that asks something of the viewer it's not just a relaxing episode of the brady bunch where you can shut your brain off a lot of the criticism that i read in the press online about family guy is very conspicuously absent of any actual research or awareness of what the show is. I joked for so many years that like, oh yeah, we just do fart jokes. And it kind of caught on and I was like, well, I'm speaking a little bit facetiously because it does ask something of the viewer and I feel like a great musical we'll does do that, that as well. Yeah, I mean, aerospace and engineer. You want to try that again? Yeah. <laughs> so aerospace like, engineer? The, I'm a small lady. <laughs> so at a certain point I realized that I just have to take this and do this. Because yeah. it looks like a small amount. It's not, though. Obviously, I'm the one who's going to drive. Yeah, I've had a phlegm issue for a That's, while. I love knowing that. You know, I was going to ask aerospace engineering, curing Fun. cancer, politics, any of that of interest. <laughs> no? My, my math is just atrocious. Okay. I don't think I could ever be an aerospace engineer. Politics, I don't know. I don't no? know. I, I, it's, it's... I mean, look who's in the running. In the past, I... I I could never do that because all they could, you know, they could pick any one of a thousand cutaways and family guy and say, hey, look what he did. Is this the guy you want running things? But I mean, ever since Trump, it's yes. like, wow, <laughs> family guy's never done anything that bad. No, exactly. So all bets are off. You're fine. You could totally make it happen. <laughs> I could be mayor. I don't think so, darling. You're the busiest guy I know. You've got a lot going on right now. Writer, director, voice of America's favorite teddy bear. And really what we are here to celebrate today, your album and this Grammy nom. Oh, ridiculous. Well, it's so ridiculous because you've had other Grammy noms and other Oscar noms. We're, we're ready to win something. You know, we, we busted our asses on this record. Who do you have to so sleep with to win a Grammy? David Bowie. So obviously that's, yeah. SOL. The music industry overall is, is a little shady, I think. Yeah. I don't know that I would want to <laughs> drop my trousers for Well, a... you might. What was the impetus going into this serious music? You know, I, I grew up uh, loving orchestras. I loved film scores. When I was in college, I discovered Sinatra, which kind of blended all of these elements. Like Sinatra was the guy who really learned how to use the orchestra in popular music the way no one else has. And in, yeah. in his, a lot of his ballads, he's singing to what sound like beautiful film scores. And so that's what we try to kind of recreate with this record, something that really makes the orchestra as much a part of the, the recording as, as the vocal. We recorded these tracks live in, in the studio, so what you hear on the recording is what happened in the studio. And it's so not the case with all the other forms of music <laughs> out there. Producing is very different now. Most of these kids, they're on their laptops and they're just like, EDM, unst, unst. Yeah. I would still love to see you do an EDM album. I would absolutely <laughs> would buy you? it. Would. Well, you'd probably be the only one, so that's why I, I probably won't. I dropped my album and the first thing Seth asked me was, is this auto-tuned? And I was like, not all of us can be perfect. You know, was, not all of us curious. can get it right, right at the first time. Hey, by the way, the answer could be no. I was genuinely curious. Because it I'm sounds good. Your record sounds very good. Thank you. Yeah, I, I have I've... it on shuffle in my car and when it pops up, I don't turn it off. It means a lot. I cannot say that for Johnny Mathis. Let's see this thing. Oh, look at that. You got a lot of uh, female fans on Twitter. Oh, knock that were it off. very excited about this. Just stop. And I love the album, and I do put it on repeat all the time. However, 
If you were going through a devastating breakup and you were a female and on your period, I would not recommend listening to it because it is devastating. Yeah, it is. I think for any fan that had, you know, purchased this album expecting Seth MacFarlane, they're, they're like, like waiting for a fart to yeah. burst out of a ship without a sail. You know, there are also fans of Family Guy who are aware that, you know, we use a anywhere from a 50 to 90 piece orchestra on the show every week. The only difference is just well, I mean, content. It, yeah. <laughs> is that this is a little bit more from the heart. What do you We're prefer doing? Jokes. Does it matter I, to you whether it's you know, I mean, one of the about reasons, boobs? <laughs> whether it's about boobs? I love doing it all. I, I, one of the nice things about animation is that you're yeah. acting, you're writing, you're drawing, you're making music. It's really the one medium in entertainment where you really do all those different things. I only have about seven people that listen to my songs, but I know that they get very <laughs> confused when I make a comedy album and then I go into like doing some devastating yeah. track. Oh, they're waiting for the ball seven to drop. Seven people. Eight, I had it on when I pulled into the Jiffy Lube, so the guy was, uh, the guy enjoyed it. That's good, I got a new customer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I didn't buy it. All right, Seth, I adore you. Thank you for being on Party Fun Aaron, Times. Thanks and... for this gasoline. <laughs> so you just have to I edit hope... this down to 16 minutes, huh? If you haven't noticed, I talk a lot. Helen Keller would notice. <laughs> Thank you, Seth. I appreciate that. As a parting gift, you get the wood. All righty. This is our last piece of burnt wood. That's actually the same wood since episode two. No one's wanted it. <laughs> Really? Uh, be sure to go buy Seth's album, please, and check out his tour dates on the link that is placed on the upper half of his torso. Thanks, Taryn. Cheers. <laughs> yeah. I have a new passion for whiskey there now, you go. apparently. Uh, uh. It's party fun times. Guys, that's it for party fun times. There is no more party fun times. The, the set is demolished. We are done. Uh, hopefully we get a season two. Who knows? Life's crazy. Give the girl a season two for sake. Listen to this man. Thank you. And uh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> That's how Letterman closed it out. <laughs> bye. <laughs>